Praise the Lord. God bless you. This is Elder Newsom with the Faith in God Internet TV. Uh, God bless you on this wonderful Wednesday. We bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's ahead of our life. And we give honor to our leadership today, Honorable Pastor Bishop Dr. Ellis Murchison, Sr. of the Pentecostal Power Church, and to Lady Paulette and to all the people of God today. God bless you. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we uh, are going to go ahead and get started with our prayer requests and get right into our lesson plan. Um, we started just a little later today. We were taking care of some uh, important things. And so we just wanted to announce to all the people of God that um, this week will possibly be our final week until after Pentecost because we got quite a bit of work to do yet. And so I want you to look at some of the previous broadcasts and catch up with some things in the next few weeks. And we'll be back uh, on, I believe, May 25th. Uh, let me just double check that. <clears throat> yeah, we should be back. Yeah, I would say May 22nd. We should be back on May 22nd. If the Lord's will, May 22nd, <clears throat> May 22nd, we should be back on the broadcast. Um, we're taking a brief intermission because uh, we're getting ready for our national Pentecost convention. And we invite you to come. But one of the things that we want to do today is get the prayer request for those of you that have outspoken requests. I want to pray for you and your family. I want to pray for the Beeman family, continue to pray for the Hatch family. Uh, let us pray for all of those that are sick, those that are shut in, those that are in the hospital behind prison walls. Continue to pray for our presider, assistant presider, and their wives, and continue to pray for the entire organization and the executive board of bishops. Continue to pray for my family. Uh, let us continue to pray that God will send forth labors into the harvest, uh, to win souls uh, for the kingdom of God and that people may be saved and people may have an opportunity uh, to have the Holy Ghost experience that we experience and that they would uh, draw the disciples. That's our ultimate goal and uh, make their journey uh, to heaven. And so we want to pray for those things. Uh, continue to pray. For all of our mothers, uh, pray for our deacons, pray for the ministerial body, uh, and let us just remember to pray for all of those that asked us to pray for them. Let us uh, remember them in prayer, because definitely that's an opportunity uh, to help and advocate for someone that's in need of prayer. Pray for my niece, uh, Naisha Bowie, uh, my Niece Bridget, all of my great nieces and nephews, pray for my nephew Deontay, uh, pray for my nephew Davies um, and Davion and uh, Anna and different different ones that uh, are part of our family. We want to ask you to pray for them. Pray for my sister Tweety Luvinia, that the Lord fill her soul with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost and that uh, he would fill her soul. Uh, we're going to move this camera. I don't like its position, so we're going to try to uh, move this camera down some. I don't know if we can move it. Yes. Yes, we want to move that down a little bit. All right. And so let us pray for those various things. Remember, my Pastor Bishop and Lady Paulette in prayer and uh, continue to pray that the will of the Lord be done in our lives. And so we're going to get ready to go before the throne of grace with our prayer anthem scripture, which is found in 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 7 and verse number uh, 14 <clears throat> through 16. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend to the prayer 
that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And so we're going to go before the throne of grace at this time. Eternal God, our Savior, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, as we thank you today, we want to give you glory, praise, and honor for who you are. Thank you, God, for salvation. Thank you for forgiveness of our sins. Thank you, God, oh God, for being so merciful unto us and those that we are, oh God, petitioning you for it on today. We ask that you would direct us in the name of Jesus, lead and guide us. And most of all, God, we pray that you will forgive us as we forgive those that trespass against us and continue to grant us your mercy, O oh Lord. Bless our precious pastors, our leaders, and those, O oh God, that are laboring in the vineyard for the kingdom work. We ask you would bless them, increase them with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And, oh, God, grant us all with prudence, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And, oh, God, virtue that we may, oh, God, continue, oh, God, to go out, oh, God. And, oh, God, be a light, be a witness for your name's sake. And, God, send forth labors into the vineyard. Continue to touch those bereaved families at this hour and those that are hurting, those that are sick, those that are going through. In the name of Jesus, oh, God. Oh, God, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you for what you've already done. We decree and declare victory in the lives of those, oh God, that we're interceding for, as well as our own life. We want to thank you, God. Continue to bless Missionary Newson. Continue to bless our grandchildren. Continue to bless our family. In the name of Jesus, bless us one by one. And Lord God, bless us as a whole. In the name of Jesus, we pray to the glory of God and we give thanks to your name. Oh God, help us, oh God, to decrease that you may increase in our lives. We forever thank you. We give you all the glory, honor, praise, and we lift you up in the mighty name of Jesus to the glory of God. We give thanks. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we're going to be on brief today. <clears throat> uh, we started just a little bit later, tad later today. Uh, and we want to go back into launching out into the deep. Um, this is going to be our final series today on evangelism. Um, we're going to uh, probably pick up something else, but um, until we uh, go to convention, we'll uh, be working on a new uh, series. And so we'll be bringing that forth when we get back, if the Lord's will. But today we're going to pick up where we left off, uh, launching out into the deep. Uh, we're going to uh, go ahead. We had number eight now, our, our eight part eight. And we're going to talk about today uh, not only witnessing, but what will happen to those that uh, who will never hear the good news. What will happen uh, if people did not <clears throat> receive this gospel? What would happen? And we know the word of God says that if the gospel be hid, hid to them that are lost. But what would happen if there were no evangelism? And we, we thought we need to touch that. Uh, what will happen to those who will never hear the good news? And I thought about the first person I thought about is in Acts chapter 10. And we left off with Cornelius in the latter part of that. We started at Acts like 10 and 34, 35 there. But we want to uh, go ahead and go to Acts 10 and uh, Acts 10 and 2. We're going to jump there and uh, talk about a few things there. And we'll let you go. But let's go to Acts chapter 10. And we're going to go to, let's go to verse number uh, 2, Acts 10 and 2. We're going to jump there and and see where we land. <clears throat> All right. So go with us there to Acts chapter 10 and uh, verse number 2. All right, it says, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion uh, of the band called the Italian band. And verse number two, eight, he was a devout man. So Cornelius uh, had some works. Um, he was a devout man. And scripture says, and one that feared God. All right. Feared God, and the Bible says, with all his house, 
which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. All right. He prayed to God always. Notice I talked about evangelism, uh, that we need to pray. God open up doors for evangelism through prayer. And you can see God prepares messengers to go down to Cornelius' house and uh, share the gospel of Jesus Christ with him. Or to declare means to uh, to tell. And so uh, they went down to his house and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just get to it. Let's read here. He saw it in a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And said unto him, thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before God. Hmm? And now send men to Joppa and call hmm? for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Tells him who to summons. Hmm? And he lodged with one Simon a tanner whose house is by the seaside and he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And notice I talked about earlier this week that we need somebody to help us, somebody to share, somebody to tell us which direction to go, somebody to guide us. Hmm? And ultimately God has chosen uh, people to work uh, in the kingdom uh, to help uh, establish not only uh, a relationship with him, but direction. Hmm? And God always has somebody uh, to direct us. If we don't know which way to go, God will put somebody in our path and uh, they will point us in the right way as God continues to uh, allow his will to be unfolded or, or done in the life of the believer. And we can see this being done uh, with Cornelius. And the angel spake unto Cornelius was departed. And he called two of his household servants. You know, there must be obedience. When, when evangelism takes place in any city, <clears throat> any place, any location, um, it's imperative that the hearer uh, responds not only in faith, but obedience to what they hear. Hmm? This is why if uh, uh, we never hear uh, the good news, uh, uh, the opportunity for choice uh, to be made would be very, very uh, unfortunate because without the good news, the person would know uh, where they are and the good news come to clearly uh, help us establish our position and uh, or our stance with God, whether if we will serve him or if we would denounce him or reject him, hmm? it's your choice. But God ultimately gives us all a chance. Hmm? And some people say, well, I don't know if God is fair. He didn't give me a chance God gives everybody an opportunity to come to him. But we must remember when he call, uh, it's up to us to answer. All right. And that's important that we know this as we evangelize and we begin to hear the voice of God. Sometimes people don't recognize God calling them. But there must be a response in faith and obedience. And Cornelius right away sent devout soldiers, hmm? uh, household servants and a devout soldier of them and that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all things unto him, he sent them to Joppa. It's important. It's important that we see this uh, because uh, it's important because we need direction 
as uh, we receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, we need the Lord to direct us, order our steps, hmm? and unfold and unveil uh, what he wants us to know. Hmm? And we can see Cornelius didn't quite uh, grasp everything, but he obeyed what the, uh, the angel of the Lord told him. Hmm? And uh, while God was working on Cornelius, he was also ministering to the one that was supposed to give the word of life or the word of encouragement um, to Cornelius. And we, uh, when we look at it, he saw um, heaven open and a vessel descended mm, on him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners mm, and let down to the earth wherein all manner four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things. And the father there, and there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. All glory be to God. This had to be some wake-up call for Peter. Hmm? And this is why I said in evangelism on yesterday, uh, the day before, which was on Monday, I said to the people of God that when it comes to evangelism, uh, we don't get to pick and choose hmm? who God want to save. Hmm? And so uh, we can see this down here written in Acts chapter 10 that Peter uh, wasn't accustomed and neither would truth be told. Some of us, we're not accustomed to some things that God is even doing in these, uh, in the close of this age. We're accustomed of traditional church. We're accustomed to doing things how we want to do them. You know, we're accustomed to, you know, what we believe is, you know, um, you know, doctrinal uh, acceptance, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, evangelism, you know. Some people feel like there's no need to change methods, you know, uh, but uh, we understand that methods change, um, but the principle stays the same. Uh, uh, you know, um, we used to fish with different methods, uh, you know, years ago. Uh, I think people still spear fish, uh, uh, but there's been new methods invented and uh, revised um, to uh, make fishing um, more simplistic, but it doesn't take away uh, the main uh, idea or the main purpose uh, or the main reason uh, that one should fish. And I will deal with it from the point of view of, you know, uh, some people, they use a hook, you know, with bait on it. But now um, there is lures that you don't need bait. I mean, there's there's a different technique of, uh, of fishing. The principle is still the same. Uh, you need to go uh, to some water where there is some fish. And you need an instrument to uh, put your line out there in the water or what, uh, uh, how are you uh, planning on catching a fish? It needs to be in the water to get the fish, but you can see where I'm going with this. In evangelism, God has opened up so many ways that people can be reached, not only on social media, but on uh, on podcasts, on uh, various uh, electronic sources, digital sources, media. And so, um, you know, I, I tell people, you know, from this formula is that, you know, um, you, you have the outreach ministry, you got the pulpit ministry, you got, um, you know, witnessing, you got uh, canvassing, you got uh, tent meetings, you got revivals, you got all these different avenues and methods that uh, people can be reached. 
And uh, Peter and the Jews were accustomed to, you know, things being, you know, according to their diet. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Oh, you can see I'm messing up already. Uh, Peter was accustomed to things being according to the Jewish diet. Hmm? And sometimes we, too, can get stuck in a place that God uh, don't desire us to be stuck at as it relates to winning souls and uh, reaching people. Uh, God want us to, and I'll be talking about something coming up in the uh, near future. We're going to be, you know, talking about breaking barriers. You know, um, we're not going to talk about it when we come back in May, but that's going to be coming later on in the year. We're going to be talking about breaking barriers. <laughs> but uh, but as we talk about this today, you know, it's very I, I, ironic that uh, the sheet comes down and all of these different things that uh, uh, Peter wasn't accustomed to or um, adjusted to. Uh, it tells him to, to eat, to slay and eat. But Peter says, not so, Lord. And we have to be careful uh, when we say no to the Lord because um, we can be finding ourselves not doing the will of God. So we want to do the will of God. And so we learn how to say yes, but God, I need you to open my understanding. <laughs> hmm? And that's where I'm at today. I need... Uh, God to open up my understanding why I'm saying yes to him and why some things are transpiring that uh, I may never understand, but I need uh, to obey and I need to follow uh, God's guidance and his direction for our lives. And that's what's so important when we evangelize and we got to let the Holy Ghost lead us and not our own um, five, you know, five senses. Uh, to lead us because uh, God wants to have free course in our lives. So in order for him to do that, uh, we must be submissive, have a willingness to uh, have an openness of heart and mind as it relates to God's church. It's not my church. It's, you know, it's not your church. It's God's church. And however he, oh, glory be to God, however he wants to operate, we must keep an open heart and mind to listen to him. All right. And that's where I'm at today as we look at this uh, particular chapter in Acts chapter 10. And uh, the voice spake unto him again a second time and says, What well, God has cleansed, uh, that thou not, uh, that thou, that call thou not common. I'm sorry that call not thou common. So he tells him, don't call common what God uh, has cleansed. And so, um, you know, we, we have a concept, you know, um, if something is not the way we used to having it, we'll, we'll condemn it. But God had already prepared uh, Cornelius house for the receiving of the gospel. And the only thing he needed was Peter to go ahead and give him what he needed. And those were the words of salvation. All right. And so some people hearts are already ready. Where you going, brother Newsom, with this dialogue today? Some people hearts are already God and already worked on them. Hmm? They already, already open to receive what God has for them. And he just need us hmm, to stand in the place where he would have us at the time he want us to be there and the location uh, for us to be there hmm, and share a word of hope. This is why I still, no matter what uh, is going on, I try to uh, definitely come on and be on uh, at least two to three times a week because uh, people need help. And if God opened their heart up with the gospel, hmm, we have to be here and be available to share it. Hmm? 
Now, here's the thing. He says here, uh, not so, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. What are you saying, Brother Newsom? There are some experiences that's going to happen, not only on this year, but as the church uh, goes forward into, uh, as we get closer to these end times, we're going to experience some things that we didn't experience uh, 30, 40 years ago. Hmm? <laughs> uh, we're going to go through some uh, things that we've never experienced before. Why, why is that? Hmm? Because we have to look at God was reaching deeper into the hearts of the ungenerated, regenerated soul. And so as God reached deeper into um, the hearts of people that want to be saved and need to be saved, we're going to have to have an open mind to how God wants to reach these people. Hmm? And uh, traditionally, uh, I know uh, we, we traditionally look at things a certain way in a certain form, and that's good. But notice in uh, Acts 10 and uh, I want to go 10 and 14 when he says the latter part of 14, he says, for I've never eaten anything that is common or unclean. So he said never. So never mean this was his first experience. Hmm. And I want to let you know in evangelism, there are some things that may be our first experience, even though um, we may be familiar with uh, how we uh, evangelize, how we do things, and how things have been done previously. And that means we must have an open heart and be receptive hmm, to the Spirit leading us. Hmm? Glory to God. I know. I know maybe this is uh maybe this is uh well not what you know people want it to be, but it has to be just what God would have it to be. Hmm? Because God is reaching people in uh ways that we couldn't imagine. Look at this. Some people couldn't even sleep last night, hmm? Because there was a word that it went into their spirit and wouldn't allow them to rest until they uh, receive what God has for them through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hmm? And then they can begin, things will begin to open up and doors will begin to unlock and revelation will begin to take place because of the gospel, the good news. Look at this. And the voice spake unto him again the second time and said, What well, God has cleansed, uh, thou, I mean, that call not thou common. He says, this was done thrice and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Hmm? This happened three times. This didn't happen one time. Hmm? This didn't happen two times. But this happened three times. Hmm? And when something happens, uh, between one and three times, it is confirmed. The Bible says, by the word, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. This was established. And look what happened. It happened three times, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. It didn't happen a fourth time. Let's take a look. And now why Peter doubted, in himself. Now, people says what they want to say, but the scriptures say he doubted. Hmm? The scriptures say he doubted in himself, not in God. Don't, don't, don't try to charge God with Peter's mess up. Hmm? That's what we try to do. We try to charge God with our mess up. But this was Peter's flaw. Hmm? This was uh, Peter's blemishes and imperfections, and we have them. 
all glory. Well, you may not have them, but I have them. Hmm? Look at this. And Peter doubted in himself, the scripture says, hmm? what this vision which he had seen should mean. Hmm? He doubted. He didn't understand it. And just because we don't understand everything don't mean we should doubt God. <laughs> oh, glory. Hmm? I told you what uh, our late presiding bishop, uh, James L. Lane Sr., our late presider, and I never forget it when the church was, when we're going through something tumultuous, but he had talked to me and counseled me and pulled me to the side and said, look, you're not going to understand everything. Hmm? I'm glad he told me that as a young preacher hmm? that helped me to go through some things hmm? in life. Hmm? Because if we understood everything, hmm? I, I would just say we probably wouldn't go through some things. Hmm? And so I thank God for not understanding everything. But if I can trust God in the process, this is what Peter needed to do. He needed to trust God in the process, and God was going to do the saving. God was going to ultimately get the job done. But he needed Peter to be obedient, be obedient and compliant hmm, to the process. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Oh, there it is again, process. Will you be compliant in the process of your making? Hmm? This is something. I tell you, this is a lesson here. But I got to let it go. I got to turn it loose. Will we be compliant in the process of our making? Here it is. And uh, he's, he was doubted in himself what the vision which he had seen should mean. And behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius hmm, had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which were surnamed Peter, were lodged there. And while Peter thought on the vision, hmm, look at this. Look at this. Stuff is happening. Peter, mind is racing, and the men is there at the gate. Look at this. God is doing the work. Hmm? And he said, while he thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, Three men seek thee. The spirit had to, oh, glory be to God. The spirit had to nudge him. Hmm? Have there ever been times the spirit had to nudge you in evangelism where it might have been a person, everybody else got up to get prayer? Have the spirit ever nudged you? You was in a, a service or a revival, and the spirit nudged you to go pray for somebody else that wouldn't get up and come? Hmm? God is real. Look at this. The Spirit uh, informs Peter there's uh, three men that seek you. And he tells Peter to arise and get down and go with him. Hmm? Doubting nothing, for I have sent them. He had to really, oh, glory be to God. Hmm? He had to really have some reassurance. The Holy Spirit had to speak directly to Peter, give him total reassurance, hmm? because now we cannot be so stereotyped in evangelism. Hmm? What are you saying, Brother Newsom? You know, we can't be so stereotyped. You know, uh, people out here need help. Everybody ain't out here playing games. Hmm? And so Peter uh, had to be uh, uh, encouraged and uh, informed of the Spirit to go with these men. Hmm? So, and not doubt, and not be nervous. Hmm? Look at this. He told him, I sent them. I have sent them. And Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and behold, I am he whom ye seek. And what cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, one that feared God of a good report among all nations of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee 
hmm, into his house and to hear the words of thee. All oh, glory be to God. Look at this. It's the word that people need to hear. And I said earlier this week, when we evangelize and we're going to evangelize, we must tell somebody about Jesus through this gospel, through this good news, to let people know Jesus saves to the utmost. Hmm? He's not dead like they said. Hmm? He's still on the throne, and he sees what's going on. Now, here's the thing. People will be lost if they don't hear. I'm going to answer the question for number eight. What will happen to those who never will hear the good news? Hmm? They will be lost. They will perish. Hmm? This is why they need to hear the good news. Hmm? Now, we're going to go to our next one. I'm going to let you go now. I'm going to go to our next one and let you go. Uh, why do we need missionaries? Uh, question came up. You know, people do have questions. And so we got scripture answer for the question. Hmm? This is a scriptural answer to the question. Why do we need missionaries? I think that's a good question. I think that's a, uh, I think that's a fair question to ask. Why do we need missionaries? <laughs> I thought that was good. Let's take a look. Let's go to Romans um, 1 and 16. We're going to take a look at Romans 1 and 16. We're going to read a few verses here. Um, you know, why do we need missionaries? Um, uh, we got some things that we're going to talk on. Well, why did the message go to the Jews first? Hmm? They had been God's special people for over 2,000 years. Why they had to go to the Jews first? Let me answer the question. Let's go to Romans 1 and 16. And it reads here, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone. I want to make sure this is clear in evangelizing. To everyone. Hmm? There shouldn't be no pickers or choosers. We can see Peter has some problems picking and choosing. Hmm? To everyone that believe it, hmm? to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed, hmm? from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Hmm? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. And unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. Hmm? That which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. Hmm? There's nobody running around not know, hmm? Because God has revealed to them, hmm? What judgment, hmm? Or made it plain to them, hmm? So it's important. God has made it plain to them and showed it to them. In verse number 20, for the invisible things of him from creation of the world, are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Hmm? This is what's going to happen. Those that who never will hear the gospel will, be, will, will have an excuse. 
And this is why evangelism is so important and it's a priority so they can be without excuse. Hmm? Cornelius was going to be without excuse. Hmm? Uh, you and I are going to be without excuse. Hmm? And so are all human beings on this earth because before God come, uh, everybody's going to have an opportunity hmm? to receive salvation. Now, will everybody receive it? Will everybody accept it? I didn't say that. God's going to let you know you had your chance. Hmm? And i never forget it. Our uh, assistant presiding bishop, uh, Charles Webb, had preached uh, over at uh, New, Mount, New Mount Olive Pentecostal Church where uh, Bishop Geller, um, Bishop-elect Raymond Johnson, his pastor and Mother Johnson, and he preached, uh, you had it made, but you left. Hmm? Everybody going to, Everybody going to uh, know that they had a chance hmm? and be without excuse. He said, you had it made, but you left. <laughs> oh, that was some kind of message there. Oh, did he preach a while? We had a Holy Ghost time there. It was a Holy Ghost experience. But look at this. I want to share this with you. Now, I'm going to let you go. Let me share this with you and let you go. It says, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Evangelism is important. Hmm? Neither were thankful. Hmm? But became vain in their imagination. And their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they, they became fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into image made like to corruptible man and to corruptible birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. We're going to stop right there. It's important. This is why we need evangelists. This is why we need missionaries. Hmm? This is why we need soldiers hmm? to tell somebody. Hmm? that God is able to save you. Hmm? And some people say, well, I just can't get saved. I'm just having so many problems. I don't know what to do. Hmm? We need missionaries. If people can know about God through nature hmm? and creation, uh, they can know that God ex exists by the truth of the gospel. Hmm? Heaven also declares the glory of God. Hmm? Hmm? And his firmament is his handiwork. And people can know that God exists. Huh? And I don't care how they try to suppress it. Hmm? The truth by their own wickedness. Huh? may deny him by their own wickedness. But we that hold the truth can point out the error of their ways. Hmm? We can tell people, uh, stop your lying and come on. Don't you want to go? Hmm? Quit your ways and come on. Don't you want to go? Hmm? We got to let people know. Hmm? that there is a God. They can refuse to commit themselves to him. That's a choice they have to make. Hmm? But we need missionaries to be fully persuaded hmm? and be persuaded by the gospel enough to tell somebody else. Hmm? Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? That I believe. Hmm? I believe in the power of God. Hmm? I believe, all oh, glory be to God, that God has power to change your life. How do I know? Because he changed mine. Glory. Hmm? And there is no secret to what God can do. What he done for others, he can do for you. 
Now, look at this. He's no respect of person. Continue to read Acts chapter 10. I got to let you go. I read it last uh, on on, uh, on Monday, on the last broadcast. I read it, Acts uh, 10 and 35, 34 through about 39 there. But uh, you read it again. Uh, Peter said for sure that, you know, God is no respecter of person. Hmm? Look at this. I want to show you something. We need missionaries who can convince people who reject God hmm, to save them from the dangerous consequences of their action. This is why we need them. I'm giving you several reasons why we need evangelist missionaries and we need uh, outreach personnel. Hmm? Look at this. God is hiring. And people need to be told about Jesus, how through him they can have a personal relationship. Hmm? Scripture says in uh, 2 Corinthians 5 19, uh, to wit, God was in Christ reconciling the world back into himself. Hmm? He was not uh, putting their transgressions on him. I'm going to get it in a minute. Look at this. It's important. People need to uh, have a personal relationship with God. We need missionaries to help the church. Hmm? Obey that great commission of Jesus Christ. That's why we need them. Hmm? I'm going to write it down here. I got it wrote down here. Knowing God exists is not valid enough. Hmm? The, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But just having an understanding, knowing that there is a God, establishes only one point, that you're not a fool. But saving faith takes you a step farther to establishing that personal connection and relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ himself. All glory be to God. Here it is. And just knowing God is not enough, people must learn through a relationship with God huh? that he's a loving God, he's a loving father. Oh, glory be to God. Look at it. He's not only a loving father, hmm? but how he demonstrated his love toward us is pointed out in the scripture. St. John 3, 16 said, for God so loved the world, hmm? evangelism, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, Peter said, God is not a respecter person. Whosoever believeth in him, glory, should not perish, but have everlasting life. You can have it. Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? Everlasting life. Do you want it? You can have everlasting life. Glory. Huh? I want it. Hmm? And I told somebody uh, when that song came out, I love God. You don't love God. What's wrong with you? Hmm? I mean that. I love God. If you don't love God, something wrong with you. Hmm? And we know what the something is. Hmm? No man can serve two masters. Who's your daddy? Hmm? Either you going, oh, glory be to God. Let me get out of here. I got to go. Hmm? Either you going to uh, make Jesus Christ your daddy or you going to you're going to make the devil your daddy. Hmm? And the lust of your father you will do. Hmm? Look at this. I want to let you know something. Look at this. We must show uh, we must show others. I'll put it like this in evangelism. We must show others how to forgive, and how to demonstrate forgiveness hmm? of their sins. Hmm? When people wrong us, we got to let it roll off our back like a duck, like water roll off the back of a duck. Hmm? Because people going to wrong you. Hmm? But here's the thing. You're demonstrating to those that don't have this hope. Hmm? that there is a savior 
And because he lives, you can face tomorrow. Hmm? I want to let you know, somebody may be on the, uh, on the limb and getting ready to jump off. Hmm? Somebody may be on their last leg. Hmm? Getting ready to throw in the towel. But I want to let you know, because he lives, you can face tomorrow. These are the faithful words of Elder Newsom. Uh, with the faith in God and that TV, we want to say God bless you. Uh, thank you for joining us today, and I uh, hope we said something uh, to encourage the people of God. We do have more for you. I still got um, plenty more to go with this evangelism, but we're going to have to uh, make this our last series, and we'll pick it up uh, uh, later on in the year if the Lord see fit, or somewhere down the road, we'll we'll be touching on uh, evangelism when we get to uh, revival. And so we're going to uh, touch on it later. But there are so many scriptures on all these different series that you've heard on this broadcast. There's, I have just scratched some of the surface of it because there's so much word in here. Nobody has it all. But I did want to hit the fundamental foundational points of evangelism. And we need people. And the last leg was going to be witnessing We'll deal with that in another um, another type uh, setting. You know, Acts 1 and 8 tells us, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. And so we need to maintain the witness. Hmm? Uh, the power of our witness is, uh, is earth unsurmountable. And we need to uh, protect that and uh, continue uh, to be that witness hmm? for the gospel's sake, for Jesus Christ. Hmm? Because your witness hmm, is speaking and preaching when the pulpit mic is turned off. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Hmm? Your witness is speaking hmm? when you're standing in front of Oh, glory be to God. People that don't know God, your witness is speaking. And will it speak hmm, uh, unto edification or unto condemnation? Hmm? And some people don't realize that your first impression could be your last one. Hmm? And so we want to make sure that we're not uh, embarrassing God hmm, by misrepresenting him. All glory be to God. And so these are the faithful words of Elder Newsom. We hope that we said something hmm, to let you know evangelism is serious. Hmm? And we need to launch out into the deep, get out of the shallow water, hmm? be willing, all glory be to God, to get your whole body wet. Hmm? It's time to take another deal. <laughs> all glory be to God. Hmm? I know, I know. I'm trying to let you know evangelism. Elijah, I had old, all oh, glory be to God, the king of Syria in uh, Kings chapter 5. Hmm? Naaman, his name was Naaman. He was, he was a captain. He was a Syrian captain of the guard, but he was a leper. Hmm? But uh, he expect Elijah to come out and do some great thing because he was, you know, he was of importance. But Elijah sent his servant out and told him, go dip in the Jordan seven times. Hmm? I'm just letting you know you need another dip. Hmm? I don't know about you. I need another dip. Hmm? And this is why evangelism is so important. Hmm? It'll help us take the dip with humility. Hmm? And we'll take the dip uh, right along with the center. Oh, glory be to God, because in the end, we want to be saved. Hmm? And we don't want to be lost. So just want to say to you uh, that Naaman, he was filled up with pride, apparently, hmm? until his servant uh, began to kind of counsel with him and talk with him and calm him down. And said, man, if he'd have told you to do something great, you'd have done that. Man, it ain't no big deal, man. I'm, I'm just paraphrasing. He said, you know, bro, we didn't travel all this way now. And you said you want to be delivered. You want to be cleansed. 
It ain't like he told you something that wouldn't help you. Well, what's it gonna hurt? Let's try it. You know? I guess name said, Yeah, I guess, you know. Yeah, I thought he was gonna do this or that. And the servant, you know, continue to encourage him. I guess he said, Well, I might as well go home. Since I'm here, I might as well go home, take this, take these dips. Hmm? And Naaman dipped how many number of times that the uh, prophet told him to dip. And when he got down to that last time, hmm, his skin was clean and smooth as a baby. Hmm? What, I, what are you saying, Brother Newsom, in your closing on evangelism? Faith and obedience is key to receiving everything that you need from God. And if you're looking and pursuing God and seeking God for an answer, when the answer come, please obey. Hmm? Otherwise, all your work and labor going to be in vain. Hmm? And so you might as well go, on, go to distance. Because if you go to distance, I can promise you an evangelism. It'll yield fruit righteousness. Hmm? That God's name will be glorified and the truth will be declared even among those hmm? that didn't think it could be done. Hmm? And so these are the faithful words of Elder Newsom. I want to say God bless you. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we got a whole lot uh, that we didn't get to. We need to go to Genesis. We need to go to Exodus. We need to go to uh, Joshua, Esther. We need to go to 2 Kings. We got a lot of more scripture dealing with this evangelism. But we uh, thought we would take uh, the time to go through some of these. And we got 2 Timothy as well. And we got just quite a few, a plethora of scriptures that we need to cover, but we're going to, we're going to hang it there. We're going to close out there and we pray that you get the just of uh, launching out into the deep. Mm -hmm. There are some territories we hadn't touched yet. And so we want the people of God to be encouraged and we pray that your success will be in God. And so please stay tuned uh, to the faith in God in that TV broadcast uh, this will be our last airing until uh, May 22nd. Uh, we want you to join us right back here on May 22nd. We're going to be in our annual Pentecost. I'm going to be uh, working uh, on getting some other things together for that. Uh, I think I'm ready, but I need to um, I always like to uh, test, test, test. It doesn't hurt to uh, foolproof everything and make sure everything is working the way it needs to be and uh, we want to be able to uh, broadcast also in our convention. And so we're working to do some things. So we're hoping that uh, we'll be able to go live or uh, give you some snippets of the convention if the Lord's will. So please pray for us as we continue to pray for you and your families. And we want to thank you for joining Faith in God in that TV broadcast. I want to say God bless you until next time. I'm your host, Elder Gregory Newsom, with the Faith in God Internet TV. God bless you in Jesus' name.